Hey, welcome back. Tonight is a continuation of what we uh, attempted the last video. Uh, last video, we created a mold uh, using just a part file and created some surfaces and then created a cavity based on that. Tonight, we're going to use the assembly function and we're going to save out these two mold halves as uh, independent internal features where they're going to be related to whatever our body is. Uh, tonight, we're going to create a fishing lure. So in that fishing lure, these uh, mold halves are going to look a little something like this, the way that you're going to be assembled. We're not going to get into the assembly functions of it. That's going to be a later, later time. So we want to go ahead and make sure that we also create a sketch picture because we're going to use a fishing lure and we don't really want to have to create that from sketch. There's plenty of images that's out on the internet. You can go grab one anywhere. Uh, let's go ahead and get started with a new part. Uh, make sure that we're in inch, pounds, and seconds. So part. Okay, we want to verify down here in the bottom right hand corner. It is inch, pound, seconds. Um, so we want to start on our front plane and I want to create a sketch. So with that sketch, I want to come up and use my tools command with my drop down. So I'm just going to use tools, uh, sketch tools, and down here along the bottom is going to be a sketch picture. So I'm going to select it. I want to go out and grab an image that I've already picked uh, off the internet. I want to make sure that it's really kind of a side profile. Uh, this one is pretty big. It says that it's 32 inches. I really don't want anything like that. I'm going to plug in three. I want to make sure that I, it keeps the same aspect ratio. I also am going to kind of place it down here along what I think is about the center of our uh, origin and the center of the fish. And I also want to make our, a little bit better transparency on here to when I create my sketches. I won't have a problem with the edges. So I come over to full image. I'm trans change my transparency to about right in there. So 75%, I got it at 0.76. Looks good, so I'm gonna go ahead and accept that. And now I wanna exit out of my sketch. All right, what I wanna do is I wanna name this one. So I'm gonna come over and I'm gonna select on the writing, one mouse click, hover for just a moment, and a second mouse click, and that allows me to rename it. So I'm gonna call this the picture. Okay, now I'm ready for my next sketch. So I want to make sure that I'm out of this. Use my escape key a couple times. I'm going to come back to the front plane, select the icon, the little flyout opens up, and I select the sketch tool. I'm going to zoom way in on this thing. Now I'm going to use the um, spline tool, and I'm going to have to create four sketches. So I'm going to come here. I don't want to put too many nodes out on this thing, but I want to put enough to where I've got pretty good control over it. And so after I got one, two, three, four, and five of them, I'm happy with the way it's following that profile. So I want to come up and I want to exit my sketch. I'm going to use my escape command just to make sure that I'm not in the sketch. So I'm going to come over and rename this one to where it makes a little bit of sense. So I'll click on it, hover, and then click again, and I'm going to call this the top profile. All right. Now, I want to create another one along the bottom, so I want to come over back to the front plane, select the icon, select the sketch tab, and I want to use the spline tool again. This one may be a little tricky because we've got a little bump right here, but let's go ahead and get started here. So one. All right, so I'm going to pick my sketch tool again. Somehow it turned loose of it. So click here, around here, here, uh, this general area, pull it down a little bit. Pull it back up, another one, and then place it in this general area, and then out there. So I'm pretty happy with the way it's followed that profile, and I want to go ahead and exit this sketch as well. And I want to rename it. So I come, I uh, select the select the writing, select it again, and I'm going to call it the bottom profile. All right. Now I need to create some planes out here. So I want to come up to my reference geometry, select a plane. Um, I want to click the endpoint of both of my splines and my other reference that I want to use. I'm going to expand my tree out and I want it to be perpendicular to my front plane. So it's going to come along this way and it's going to use these other two references. Now I accept this. So we have a plane here and I'm going to call this, I'm going to name it the tail plane. All right, so I want to use the tail plane and I want to create a sketch. Use my Control-A command to make it normal. Um, it's going to orient pretty far out. 
I want to hide the plane just to get it out of my way where it doesn't interfere with anything. We're going to use some pretty simple profiles here. I'm just going to use a simple circle and now I want to use a sketch point and I want to place it on this upper node and this lower node. Make sure it snaps to those. Use my escape command and I'm going to rotate this thing around just a little bit where we can see what's going on. So the sketch picture is, is kind of there and it may be in the way. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to select it and I'm going to hide that as well. So now that's, that's out of our way. All right, so I want to add a relation. Make sure that nothing is selected in our entity. So I'm going to come pick this top point that we placed on our circle and the end point of our spline. And I want to make those two coincident. Same thing with the bottom point. If I select something completely independent of those two, it automatically accepts it and moves on to the next thing. So I'm going to select the bottom end point of the circle and the bottom end point of our spline. And I'm going to make that coincident. Notice our sketch is fully defined and we're, we can now exit this as well. Notice I didn't edit my, I didn't fully define my splines. I could do that, but I want to make sure that everything's going to work before I come back and do that. So when I exit my sketch, and now I need to create another plane on this opposite side. So we had one here that we drew a circle. So let's go ahead and select reference geometry again. We want to create a plane. I want the two endpoints of our spline. And also want it to be perpendicular to our front plane. So I have to expand this out. Select front plane. It is perpendicular. Now we're fully defined. We can accept this. And I want to call this the mouth plane. All right, I should have named my tail sketch to tail. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. All right, so now I'm going to select the mouth plane and I'm going to select a sketch. And I just want to draw another simple circle. So come up and we'll pick a circle like about that big. And I want to put sketch points on these two nodes just to make it a little easier to uh, create our points of reference. Um, I'm going to come over and I'm also going to hide the mouth plane. Okay, so let's come up and we want to add relations. I'll make sure I have nothing selected in my box. I'm going to pick the upper point on my circle and the end point of my top profile and I'm going to select coincident and the same thing with the bottom too. And I'm going to make those coincident as well. So that sketch is fully defined. There's not really a need to uh, do anything else with that. I'm going to exit this. I'm going to rename this to the mouth profile. All right, so now I have several sketches that I can create this body with. So let's just show our sketch picture again just to kind of see how it fits in there and how it's all going to come about. I'm going to hide it again. Now I want to come up and use a lofted ball space. Um, this is where I want to pick the circles kind of in the same spot. So I'll pick both circles. It's pretty well straight here, but I want to use guide curves. And that's the first two splines that we had picked. So I'm going to pick that run along the back, so it's kind of funky there. Then I come up and I pick the top curve, and now we have this guide. So this is kind of our fishing lure body that we would be able to use. So I'm going to show the picture again and just see if everything kind of fix, fits in there. And that would be about a three inch long lure with, uh, we could put our treble hooks and, and our leader hook on the front. So I'm gonna hide the sketch picture again just to kind of get it out of the way. And I'm gonna use my control seven command uh, to make uh, this orient normal to us. And now I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna call this, I'm gonna create me a new folder, put everything in it. And I'm gonna call this my jump junk loop. Okay, so now we've got our part. We want to create a new assembly with this. So I'm going to come up to uh, top toolbar, file, uh, make assembly from part. Uh, this is the junk lure. It's out here somewhere because I got that big 30 inch line that I failed to uh, close out. I'm just going to use my green uh, check to accept it and it's going to place my fishing lure on the origin that we actually created initially. So now we have junk lure and um, I want to go ahead and save this out. So I'm going to save it and it's going to be junk lure and that's going to be our assembly. I hope I saved that in the right 
area. So let's do a save as. I'm not sure if I didn't roll it down. So it is, it's an assembly. So, all right. So now what I want to do is I want to add a mold half. So I'm going to come up to the very top and I want to drop this chevron down where it says insert components, but we want to insert a new part. So it says minus part eight. It just depends on how many parts that you've actually worked through, but I'm not going to worry about renaming it or anything, but what I do want to do is I want to select this little flyout comes up and I want to edit this part. So now this one becomes translucent and we're now working in part eight or whatever part number yours is. And I want to use the, the um, planes that was originally in our junk, our, our fishing lure, the one that I named junk. So I'm going to select the front plane and I'm going to create a sketch should orient normal to us. I want to come up and select a center rectangle, put it on the origin, pull it out. Let's just put some dimensions on it to fully define this thing. So let's call it 2.75 and 0.75. So we're fully defined here. We come back to our features command. We select extruded ball space. I'm going to rotate the thing around. It's headed through here. Um, what I want to do is I'm going to give it maybe 0.3 so it's actually extended out past our lure. So I'm going to accept that. So we now have this block. We have this translucent uh, fishing lure in here, but I'm not done yet. I want to insert features and then cavity. All right, the cavity that I want is this fishing lure itself. So I don't really want to pick it over here in the graphics area. I want to come over here and I want to pick it out of the tree just because it's easier for me to see. I may miss it if there's several parts out there. So I'm going to go ahead and accept this. And now if I roll it around, I can look at my mold half and half of it has got a cavity in it. But we're not done yet. We need another mold half on this side and we'd have to put some runners in here. But let's go ahead and let's come up and we want to select our drop down again. We want to create a new part again. This is part number nine. It's just naming them. We can come back and rename them after the fact. I want to come to part nine. I'm going to use my right click command. Low flyout pops up and I want to edit the part. So now notice it's it's highlighted blue and everything else is translucent. I want to create an extruded boss base and I want it on this face that we were working with earlier on the half of our mold. Use my control 8 command if yours doesn't orient normal to you. Now I'm going to use my convert entities. I don't want to have to create this sketch, so I'm going to select convert entities. It asks me what entity I want to convert. I'm going to pick that face. So it's gone ahead and created a sketch for me. And now we can exit our sketch and we should be in the extrude command. Uh, we used 0.3 last time. That's what we're going to use this time as well. Now this is where when we uh, created our mold cavity, we're going to do it again. So I'm going to select insert uh, features uh, cavity again and this is where I like being able to pick it from the tree instead of over here in the graphics area because it can get kind of confusing so I want to come over and I want to pick my lure again and I want to accept it so now we have a cavity now what I need to do is I need to exit editing the part so we now have two mold halves and we have a fishing lure. So let's come up and see what it looks like. So I'm going to use the exploded view command. I want to pick this mold half. I want to drag. I want to pick this mold half. I want to drag it out. I want to pick this mold half. I want to drag it out the other way. And then our fishing lure, we can pull it up just to see that they're all there. So we rotate the thing around and that's what it all looks like. So just make sure that you've got everything saved in the proper format and you can turn that in on your learning management system. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.